go all the way down by that. First stage. We all right? just we all just follow her around. So everyone will be better at this one. to start our story as its commencement has a specific historical date. July 31st, 1991. The fateful event had come. The moment the Bess and Schroeder families had been waiting for for months had finally come to pass. The U.S. Senate finally voted to allow women to fly combat aircraft. It was a relief to both of the families, who were very progressive in their views. Also, a princess was born. After 28 hours of grievous labor for the queen, the precious gift finally deemed the world fit to receive her. The princess was taken home and quickly became a ruler not only of her kingdom, but of the hearts of her friends and family. The princess only had to flash her dimples, and the beholder of this sight would experience a feeling in his chest not unlike a marshmallow dropped into hot chocolate. She continued to grow into a healthy and charming child, and eventually acquired a younger sister and brother, along with a new palace in the peaceful countryside. And the princess was happy. The time came when the princess entered into middle school. She flourished, naturally winning over the unwashed masses with a flash of her dimples and a drop of her charm. The only thorn in her otherwise blissful existence was an evil, red-headed, sixth grade figurative dragon. The dragon picked on her mercilessly, chipping away at her Fragile pubescent self-esteem and happiness, the princess would return to her castle at the school day's end and pour her heart out to her mother, the queen, probably saying something along the lines of, Oh, mother, that mean dragon is so very cruel to me. What could he possibly mean by such treatment towards a delightful, 
an enthralling person like myself. I simply cannot understand. But probably less eloquent. To make the matter worse, his disdain was rendered even more hurtful since the princess actually harbored secret feelings of affection for the gangly ginger. Now, the queen suspected that motives softer than evil propelled the dragon's cruel actions, but simply advised her daughter to ignore the boy's teasing. <laughs> So would not the natural course of action, now that she was available, be to pursue the hairless young man? Preposterous! A beautiful princess never dirties her hand in the pursuit of a suitor, especially when others are lined out the door for a chance with her. So she accepted the intentions of an older man, a respected jester. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Lost in the tower. Oh. You know what? Where are my manners? Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. Ah. Oh my God! Thank you. <laughs> It was not long before the princess realized she was much too beautiful and poised for the jester. It ended. And what do you think happened next? Why, the not-so-mean dragon mustered all the gumption in his bald body and asked the beautiful princess out on a date. They dined at the classiest of establishments, El Torero's, and had a lovely fiesta. And so, this was the beginning of a beautiful relationship, was it not? Oh, not so. The ginger's feet turned to lead and began to drag, and our protagonist, who really couldn't be expected to wait for, well, anyone, began a new relationship with another knight. Agony must this poor dragon have endured. The dimpled princess, who had indeed captivated him in middle school, kept slipping through his fingers. His luck seemed to be rotten, but he should not have despaired, for the princess's tryst with the knight turned out to be a flame. She was once more on the market, like a big, juicy, yet graceful cow. Our unlikely suitor had to act quickly, for cows of her sort are not for sale for long. Catching his lady love between knights, jesters, and the occasional troubadour turned out to be quite the challenge, but one he decided he was up for. Attempt number two went more along storybook lines, and they began, they began a courtship that extends to this very day. The dragon was no longer an evil beast, but a, but a worthy prince, an ambassador between gingers and people with souls. Oh, well, thank you, Prince. Except this is not mine. Princess, I believe this belongs to you. The two have dated through some of the most significant years in all young people's lives. Through their senior years of high school, they had each other. When they graduated, it was together. 
When the princess left her kingdom for the first time for college, her protector was there by her side. They made the transition from children to adults, aiding each other the entire way. And the future beams bright when they look to it, for they continue to fall more in love each and every day, and it is the hope and prayer of all who love them that they continue to delight in each other and live happily ever after. Will you follow me, princess? Yeah. I love you so much. You're my best friend. Will you please, please, please be my princess forever and marry me? <laughs>